Do I have to step away for a minute? <laughs> Six minutes before ten. Six minutes before ten. I have my second screen. This one's a massive 35 incher. So I can see everything. One reference screen and one action screen here. Fantastic. Nice. What am I looking at here? Oh, I see. Ah, yes. Reference items all available. Trying to step away. Mike's not really talking yet. Still on mute. Gromp is active. What else is here? Fantastic. Shall there be more amusement, pain, intrigue? I was plotting almost an hour ago. Still blotting as I go along here. Come with a new plot. Still not quite sure what 11 p.m. will bring for the heroes after they just got attacked by those massive giants. Those massive fairy like giants, of which no one could identify what the hell they were. Probably didn't really matter to be honest, they're just fairy giants, anyways. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yes, everything's still recording. Excellent. Fantastic. Soon the extras will start falling like flies. One, two, three. Like little flies, they will be. And then we'll have to wait. Who are we calling extras? <laughs> The extras? Why, of course, the rangers. Who else would they be? All those mercenary rangers that you have dragged into this. Probably so there are certain dooms and deaths, really. You know, like, depending on how this all Technically, they volunteered. Technically, you convinced them that it was worth pursuing the risky pay payout. Hey, they decided to go ahead with it before I came along. It was their idea originally. Yes, but they they had wanted to actually leave, figuring that after being you know enchanted by that nymph, that it was getting a bit too crazy even for these pointer perks. So. Hello, everybody. Hello. My network connection is a bit iffy. Turn to the dark for a moment. Ah, yes, Mr. Shadehard. Already streaming. Everyone remembers what happened last time. I'll let Hawkfield sit there for a while, because clearly he's just going to sit there for a while. Not that he does that much. Most absolutely necessary anyways. So Hawkfield's like, eh, whatever. Wanders out. It's like, eh, la, 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 la. Like he does. No one knows where he wandered off to. Nobody else. And nobody else notices the difference. No difference is noticed. He comes back. Oh, you were gone? <laughs> That's right. So, you guys managed to head back to the treehouse. Not too much longer away. So, I was just like, oh, I don't know why Kronk is still so badly wounded. I think. Uh, right, Sensei, we should probably heal that guy. <laughs> I think Forge might and Kronk. Uh. uh you Vanish off screen, fair distance away from the rangers' camp, and then recentering everyone. Hawkeye will probably hide closer by, but not that close, because he's just like that. I like <laughs> Antisocial. No, he just doesn't want to get caught in any sort of attack, probably. <laughs> That's exactly how I just say you'd be thinking, anyways. Yeah, he, he doesn't want to get caught in any area of effect things. 
because yes. they wouldn't actually notice him anyways. Exactly. <laughs> so, yes, 10 p.m. mass is quiet. People go to Grom's like, I'm going back to sleep. You know, he's wounded pretty bad. I think Forge spent most of his energy healing with him, really. With his... Well, we have plenty of potions. True. I suppose you do. I don't know whether you want to feed it to him. It's not like Grom is technically a player character. <laughs> So, no, but he's really good at absorbing damage. That is true. <laughs> that is very true. So, and my connection is so slow because I'm running away from the actual router this time around. Let's see here. Pharmaceuticals. There was also a trauma kit. That technically has a. No, uh, has a 17 one. trauma packs, actually. Was that stuck, stuck in Wondrous Items or something? Yeah, it's in Wondrous Items under Technological. I haven't sorted that bit yet, but I have that page open because I was working on slotted items. Well, so. Yeah, Trauma, 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 Trauma Fact isn't really a potion anyway, so yes, it actually would probably be better in, one, in Wondrous <laughs> Items anywhere, area anyways. Trauma Pack Plus! Oh yes, Trauma Pack Plus would be a very powerful healing item compared to all the meteor your potions you might have. I don't know, I'm not mm. looking at that section right now. So, we have SRD Trauma Pack. Plus, as if anyone cares, I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy to just leave Grump sitting and just like, oh, I'm just gonna get some rest. And if he flops down, he goes out of sleep or something like that. Oh, you should probably use something on him. Yeah, well, if, if nothing else, um, Forge will heal him in the morning, as it oh, were. We should use something on him now. Yeah. All right. Trauma pack, pack plus. We can use a few of. Trauma pack plus. It is. And it turns out it's actually not that much more amazing. Does anyone have DC healing? DC food. Uh, DC. I think. For heal skill. That is. Anyone have heal skill? It's more I believe effective. I have a few points in it. A few points. Well, give me a heal check, Winston, as you. Take, Take out this technological item called call a Trump Pack Plus, which you discover while rooting through the groups of loot. Hmm. <laughs> you, it's, it's like literally like, like a defibrillator and a whole bunch of these wacky, wacky like, you know, uh, <laughs> EpiPen sort of type gear things. You're like, well, this is weird stuff. But, but you have, have a few points in healing, healing heal skills, so you're like, I kind of get what this stuff does. <laughs> and you jab into a Grom who Grom's like ass. And he's like, ah! He literally shoots. He's like, what the hell did you do that for? <laughs> and then the nanites... You're welcome. <laughs> the nanites start going and working to see his wounds so they knew. I was like, oh. Well, it's starting to feel a little bit better, but not amazingly so. So, you and Atsu, you managed to heal 48 plus 4 hit points on him. With that one trauma pack. Oh, wait, how much? Oh, it's one charge. So, each trauma pack. Actually, yeah. Practically, if Silas is here, he probably would have healed even more, but oh well. <laughs> you also have weakness. Yeah. Well, if we ever come across his body, I noticed that we have a few uh, gentle or pose potions in there. <laughs> I suppose so. I suppose so. If. So, so give me a 48 plus 4 for that trauma pack. pack. Plus, you've also, also got a whole slew of lesser, lesser trauma packs, packs for sure. sure. Uh, 1d8 plus 1 per... Five points above fifteen. It's up to you how many you want to use on this guy. I'm just gonna average it out. I'm over here like I'm not actually sure how how much like what percentage you said that healed forty eight point four. Forty eight plus four. You can either roll it or assume average and start pumping packs into it. Roughly average. I'm a little tired tonight. I'm a little slow. Okay, so well, if you just not really pump, tired. You just want to pump packs into this guy for fun. I mean, what here, uh, I'm, doing, I, I, I'm getting it. Okay, you have got it. So I say about yeah. twelve hit points per trauma pack and twenty-four, four, five, five, twenty. Maybe I should have let you do it. <laughs> okay, nineteen hit points. So I already subtracted one trauma pack plus. Already, so I'm, I'm just gonna, gonna average it out. So every charm pack you use is 12 hit points, which isn't actually that amazing compared to maybe a potion, certain potions, depending on whether you have cure critical wounds or not. Um, and now the best we have is cure serious wounds. 
Yeah. Uh, I think that's like what, 48? Something like that. 3D8. Hawkfield. Hawkfield is here. Um, Forge, uh, Forge will just shrug, go over, and uh, slap Gromp on the back and hit him with uh, telekinetic surgery. Okay. You technically knit his wounds together as if applying sutures, but with your mind. Forcing it together. Healing. 72. 72. He's at 141. One point of burn is not going to is not going to kill me. Okay. That's good. So. Liston would be a little put out if you died. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, a potion of cure serious wounds will heal about 21 hit points. points. Roughly. Roughly. Excuse me. So you can burn trauma packs, you can burn, burn potions of cure serious wounds, which you only have like, oh, you actually have 15? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, he's got 141 hit points, that's good for now. <laughs> like, so you're like, oh, whatever, we're not spending any more of the crew on this guy. It's like, cross like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Four player character turn in NPC, just like, yeah, well, okay, whatever. Let me go back to seeing the stuff. Hitting me even putting a needle in my ass, you was I'm an old man, I you on your sleep. And then he rolls back on the ground and sleeps in his armor. It's too late for you. Yeah, and he's snoring now. Okay, great. 60 minutes later. Hoppy, who's meditating, because he's an elf, sees a uh, mist, a dark mist. Uh, Popping sort of mist. Reminds you of the pillars of ash, probably that ash mist, but it's not actually ash, it's actually normal mist. Normal fog float around the entire encampment. This can't be Great. Good. Not good. Of course it can't be good. Can't be very good at all. So yes, you see this mist flowing through the encampment. And that's all you notice. Is there anything you want to do? Or do you just be like, whatever, miss is down there, we're up here, we don't care. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> wakey, wakey, everybody. You want to wakey, wakey, everybody? All you know is it's dead quiet right now. Very <sighs> extremely. Yeah. Everyone gets a couple of slaps on the side of the head. Wake up. Well, that, that means you have to go all the way back to the treehouse where they are right now. Uh, any rocks I can throw? <laughs> You're like, I don't even want to get close. Can I? Can I make a perception check? I don't need sleep. You don't need sleep. Okay, make me a perception check. All right. Any damn a perception check. Because of your 41 perception check, you can literally tell that people are getting stabbed in their sleep. It's so quiet. It's almost imperceptible. In fact, Hoffman can roll perception check and he wants to hear the same thing. But yeah, people are being literally having their throat slit in the fall. <laughs> uh, gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. Yeah, there's not even the gurgle part. They just die. <laughs> and they're done for. All right, well... I wake everybody in the tent uh, quietly. Wake everyone in the tent quietly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. You wake everyone in the tent quietly. Great. And everyone's starting to wake up. Oh, God, God damn it. He was why might you wake up again? Can an old man get some rest around here? Say. <laughs> You're in the wrong profession for that, buddy. Old soldier, can I get a retirement? Bit of rest when I'm retired here. Well, I'm technically not. I don't. Uh, let's see. Um, permanent retirement. You are uh, ready for. Well, and I point. And, and I, I point to uh, all of the uh, rangers with slit throats. Well, you can't see them. It's foggy. You can't, you can't, okay. 
All you, you can hear them, that's it. All you, you get is you can just barely hear them. If it weren't for your extremely sharp senses, or your lucky roll, whichever one it has to be. A little bit of both. A faint gurgle. <laughs> Gurgles, literally. Wow. Well, I'll take that for a I'll take that for an initiative. Okay, Mr. Grom. Didn't think it would be combat, but whatever. Grom's like 14. Hawk feels 26. And the invisible. Stealthy killing people who are killing people in the night. Well, in fact, I'm gonna come up with something for these guys. <laughs> Fog ninjas. Fog ninjas. That's nice. Right. Uh, I Miss guess. Ninja sounds more plausible. Miss Ninja? <laughs> this is the realm of AR. There, there are no Miss Ninjas here. There's no, no Ninjas here. Not zero. Not a. Not a damn thing. Okay, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I pulled something. That number is there. Okay. Ninjas in the Mist, sequel to Gorillas in the Mist. <laughs> like, I, don't even, I don't even know that movie or anime. Whatever the hell that Gorillas in the Mist is. <laughs> Sounds like a nice. nature documentary. Yes, it is. It sounds no. like a nature documentary. <laughs> it was, I think. Well, it was a movie, but I think it was based on the true events. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Let me see here. I wish I had a lot of RAM, but I don't. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's see. On oh, this layer here, the so-called people that you quote as Miss Ninja. <laughs> there are no ninjas actually, but whatever. Your nickname is Miss Ninja. <laughs> you needed a name, I gave you a name. You didn't ask for a good name. <laughs> down here because apparently I cannot multitask very well I can um, sympathize okay so now I organize initiatives and I can tell you that Hoffield is first what does Hoffield want to do in the distance that the sounds of people like ah! Very faint, so faint that I don't even know if Winston heard anything to be honest. Winston, give me a second check. Grom, Grom's a clueless old man, so his perception is so crappy, it's not even worth rolling. <laughs> Let me check. Yep, he didn't hear anything. <laughs> he heard Forge waking him up. Why the hell are you waking me up, damn it, tin can? <laughs> Say, hey, wait, I'm actually the tin can. You're just the tin man. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> see, probably the last joke. joke. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> old. What can I say? Climbs his feet. He's like, okay, show me what I got killed. He draws his massive ass top blade. And he looks around and he's like, all oh, I see is fog. He goes, God damn, this is as bad as the time of climbing the tower. I'm going to hold my action. You know, hold your action. Hey. Hawkeye's action. This is more gurgling sounds. Forge, what are you going to do? I'm going to draw some attention. So I can telekinetic telekinetically fly. So I'm going to fly out here. Out where? Over there. Okay, sure. It's to the north of you, far north with the. Because you, because Winston being also paranoid, made her treehouse far south of the action cannon. 
Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll fly about there, um, and then I will start gathering power, which is going to create light and sound, because, well, that's what it does. Um, so if they weren't aware that somebody's aware of them, they are now. Okay, yeah. You see, everyone sees Forge become a beacon of light in the darkness. And I'm about 60 feet in the air. And you're about 60 so. feet in the air. Making himself a prime target in night fighting. <laughs> yep. Lovely. Might, does Might want to do anything? Uh, Might will hang back. Yeah, Might will hang back. Might is not stupid. Might is not combat capable, except in rare instances. So. Okay. Ah, I'm ready to see. Okay. Grom drops to the treehouse, runs over, and is hanging towards the guys. Like, God damn it, those guys are getting slaughtered. Here's wake up, everyone. Wake up. And some people are starting to wake up. Finally, someone actually shows it. Shot it to the camp. Evil. You're under attack. It's like, and then more of the the Merc Rangers shout out to their their pizza Grom's warning that the camp is under attack. Winston, what do you want to do? Can I turn off the flashlight mode on on my weapon here? It glows. Uh, you could, but you won't get any bonus damage while the flashlight is off. You want to well, silence if... it? Sure, go ahead. You can silence the flashlight. Can I turn it back on when I need it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> of course. It's your weapon. Hey, okay, I, I don't do anything until I know for sure I can undo it. Well, I don't know. You can turn it off what? You will it to... Will, will the, the light, light of Durin is to not, not be the light of Durin at the moment? Yeah. Okay. I mean, Forge is, is uh, attracting all the attention. I'm going to kind of uh, hush up the light and uh, hang around, like, close here and set up. Well, maybe a little bit further back. Set up combat <laughs> patrol <laughs> to uh, intercept anybody that happens by me on their way to attack him. Okay. Going on the defensive to protect your fellow ally. How admirable. Admirable teamwork that is. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, Hopfield, your turn again. You're just like in the distance. You see Forge light like a, a burning candle, making himself like the biggest target in the universe. <laughs> You're like, uh... <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yep, shining man there. He, he's shining like Colossus, plus add sunlight. Makes him like a really, really glowing metal reflective surface. <laughs> At night, amongst the trees, 60 feet in the air, amongst these massive, massive fairy trees. They now look like deciduous trees again, instead of evergreens. Or jungle trees. You can't really tell which keeps morphing so quickly sometimes. What is it going to be, people? Who is next? Or oh, wait, how you? Have you decided to do anything yet, or just like, uh, Where exactly is this mist at this point? The mist is everywhere, everywhere around you, all over the forest, cutting vision all the way down to five feet around people, mostly. Can't see anything beyond five feet, technically. Nice. Uh, yes, yes. Beautiful fun. Okay, yes, what do you want to do? <laughs> evil laugh, evil laugh. I guess... Uh, Alright, so then I can't even see where everyone's moving to. Yeah, your your perception is high enough. You can roll perception. You have an idea where they went off. So yes. 
Come on, Forrest. Literally, he's like, it's a shot of you. Even if he's not that well visible, you kind of get an idea of where he is because he makes such a ruckus through the branches and trees. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. get an idea of roughly where he is. So right. if you wish yeah. to head in this direction, sure. Uh, I'll go in the same direction, but nowhere near him. Of course! Because it's <laughs> off you. You must make sure he does not get hurt. <laughs> Getting too close to his fellow allies is a dangerous thing these days, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Die. He just moves well north based on this map. Okay. <sighs> Very well. And what happens next? Ah, uh, shoot. Let me check one last little thing. Need to check one last little thing here. Da, 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 Need to check this. What do I have here? Oh man, that sucks. Oh, I guess that's not their lucky day. Okay! Um, more gurgling sounds vaguely coming to Hoffield and Forge's extremely sharp ears. Winston's perception was also very good. You also hear more of the Mercs. Uh, well, not really gurgling sounds. This is now Grump yelled warning. You kind of just hear the like, I can't see! Where, where's the noise? Ah! News, what the hell? And, ah! <laughs> more Mercs are just like, okay. Hey, hey. Not necessarily dying in their sleep, at least, but, but they're kind of fighting blind in the fog. Ah, gosh, I love fighting the fog. Don't you? <laughs> in fog mm. conditions, hilarious. Forge, what are you going to do? You're just like, Whoa, where the hell are these people? <laughs> fighting all um, to the north. I'm, I'm going to gather power for another round, uh, which makes even more noise and slightly um, brighter. And when I release it, it's going to cost me nothing, so. Okay, fantastic. Uh, I need to come up with one last thing before I move on to the thing Majigi here. Uh, oh boy. I am on the correct layer, I believe. Yes, I am. Uh, da, 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 da. One last thing, one last thing here. Who was next? Gromp? Oh god. Yeah, Gromp's is like, he's running blind around the fog, has no freaking clue what the hell is going on. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, not very fun. Not very fun at all. I'm now picturing him off, like, in the distance. Like, he's not even close to the fight swinging his ass off. Yeah, actually, if I wanted you, please roll a 1d8 so I can randomly determine where Grom runs off and do. <laughs> One. Uh -huh. See, see, what I'm thinking is uh, Blinken from Robin Hood Men in Tights. <laughs> <laughs> Master Robin! <laughs> when he grabs the sword and he's just whittling down on the uh, pillar. Destroys it. <laughs> yep. Destroys that pillar completely. Oh, that's great. Oh, God. One. Oh, lovely. Now I have to remember the... The chart for throwing weapons again. Oh wait, I have the chart. It's on a reference document that's far, far away. <laughs> Shh, I see now. In a galaxy. <laughs> no, like, galaxy. You got that right, man. Uh, damn, I have to open this file, which means another reference document. To... Okay, yes. Okay, where are you? Throwing weapons. Where is that tiger? Oh, there it is. One. He went backwards. <laughs> <laughs> he was so confused, he went backwards, of which you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six. So, uh, yeah, he's like, where the hell are they? He's back towards the treehouse. It's like, and he just can't see, he can't even see his fingers in front of his face. Okay. Uh, next. What in the world happens? Well, let's see. All of the random screams are coming from the encampment, yes? Yes, pretty much. So I will move oh, closer. Just yet before you move, something else must happen. Before you oh, goody. Move. 
with you, Wiston. Ah, and it bodes not great well, not very well for Mr. Forge, unfortunately. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, well indeed. Give me another perception check, uh, everyone. All right. It's okay. It's not going to go well for the bad guys either. I guess it's only fair. <laughs> okay, what am I seeing here? Hawfield, you definitely uh, notice a shadowy being floating through the air. Well, no, wait, no, not really. It's too foggy even for you. You just hear something in the distance somewhere in the, in the area where we're sitting forge are, but that's the best you can you can do because of the fog. Shade, hard forge is clueless. Wisdom is clueless. Okay. And so the fun begins once again. <laughs> thought you escaped. Someday I'll actually set up. <laughs> you thought you had escaped, but you were wrong. You were very wrong. <laughs> Okay. I don't think anybody actually thought we escaped anything. <laughs> that is true. We're still playing, aren't we? We didn't escape anything. Yeah. Okay, here, I need to just write this down in a second, because this is obviously getting irritating having to roll several times in, in short order. I should probably cut, cut and paste copy this. <laughs> Huh. Okay, Forge, out of nowhere, daggers seem to strike out from every direction as you wheel around in the air. And I need your armor class. Ooh. AC is some. Uh, AC is 25 at the moment. even for me to count. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. What was it? 25? 28? Something? 25. 25. AC, not enough. AC, not enough. Well, you definitely got hit three times for sure. And then... It's okay. Then you got hit another three times. <laughs> That's definitely not going to go very well. You did go ahead and get that breath of life thing on your armor, didn't you? <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, and then, oh, you even got stung too. Oh man, this is, this is brutal. Brutal. Oh, just wait until I can go. Okay, Forge, you are hit so many times from every direction. You take 106 points of damage, and you take okay. and you take six negative levels from each Ouch. of the knife blows. Plus, you must make a fortitude saving throw. I think. No, sorry, will saving throw. I need you to give me a will saving throw. As the daggers come out of nowhere, and you you remember this attack. It was from the Pillars of Ash on the staircase where Silas and Arlo wow. supposedly died. They found out. Right. <laughs> you said will save? Yes, will save. Ah, uh, okay. 
That that definitely isn't gonna cut it. So you, this is your choice chance to use a hero point before all is too late. <laughs> sure. Hero sure, I'll use a hero point to reroll. Spend the hero point. Better, but still not enough. So you take four points of charisma drain, and are now confused. <laughs> Very good. Oh, this will be interesting. Okay, let's see. And then we were like, well, nice knowing you. I'll send you a postcard. I'm out of here. <laughs> and you are now confused. So, Wiston. Oh, wait, before Wiston, you also got attacked. Wiston, unfortunate. <laughs> Whoops. You were also wait, attacked, Wiston. I need to... Uh, um, armor, armor class, Wiston. Whoops, that's the wrong page. That's why I can't find it. Oh, your armor class is 24. 24. Uh, yeah, you were definitely hit a lot. <laughs> Seven dagger strikes from in the darkness strike out and hit you practically. And how much is that going to turn out? God. You take 119 damage, Winston, and you must also make a will saving throw. As you are stung. Hopefully your will save is better than Forge's. Hopefully. Now Forge is floating in the air, gathering power confused. <laughs> Looking around This is wildly. just awesome. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Critical success! Nice. Bonus hero point to Wiston for the first 20 of the night. Okay. What's did you manage to resist the weird poisonous effect from that sting? Oh, you and, said that was... and you took 116 damage from all the blows from daggers, bites, and stings. And you take seven negative levels, which means you lose an additional oh. 35 hit points. So as far as you also lost an additional 30 because you took six negative levels. Six negative levels of Forge, yep. seven to Wiston, which means a negative seven to all rolls and a negative six to all rolls of Forge. <clears throat> Wiston, what are you going to do? It came out of nowhere in this darkness and fog. Ah, that's not what I was trying to do. Wiston, what shall you do? Oh, your enemies love taking advantage of horrible situations. And of course, Hopfield's like standing in the distance, like, ah, I'm so not to you that close. <laughs> it's so ironic, it really is. <laughs> in some way. So, uh, Ashley, maybe maybe we'll have to make the twin sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not dead yet. True. Oh, but I think you guys might want to start running. <laughs> Lead through the night. And in distance, Groff is like, Where the hell is everyone? <laughs> We're over here getting shish kebobbed. Okay, Winston, what are you going to do? You're just like, Where the hell is the tax coming from? It's like foggy and it's dark, and you have no freaking clue where whatever is going on. You're striking blind. Can I switch? Um. Can I switch out uh, my ice slot item? Uh, the move action, sure, you can switch it out. It means you don't have to stand still, though. So pull your standard after that. Well, considering that I have no clue where to where these guys are to run away from them. Yeah, I know. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I love fog. I can hear the smile. I can <laughs> hear the smart. <laughs> You may have dark vision people, but you don't have fog vision. <laughs> hmm, hmm. Well, anyone with blind sense should be okay. 
Yeah, but unfortunately, Hopiel, you you chose to be invisible to everyone else's senses. You and your senses themselves are them are good, but they're not like superbly like up there. <laughs> no, I didn't say Hawk could see them. I know, I know, Hawk can't see that. Yes, if someone had blind sense, maybe sense, uh... maybe tremor sense, something sense. I guess they might have a chance in this situation. Or you can fire blind. Feel free to randomly click on the screen and select in the strike zone. Maybe you'll luckily hit something. <laughs> How about blind fight? 50% chance, mischance. You still have to select where, which target zone, like which target square you are on the screen. Well, it's better than nothing. Winston actually has blind fight. My god, the rarest feat of all. I don't have blind fight. I have blind man's fold. Is that better or worse? <laughs> it's... Um, Blind Man's Full obscures normal vision, grants the effects of improved blind fight feet. Uh, I don't even remember what that does. Uh, <laughs> improved blind fight feet. I know what blind fight feet does. Uh, 3% re roll uh, or something. Uh, Melee attacks ignore mischance for less than total concealment. Still re-roll your mischance percentile for total concealment. It's you successfully concealment situation right now. It's there's fog and there's darkness. It's <clears> crazy, <throat> super dark plus foggy. Where's false situation? Ah, so you're gonna have mischance anyways. Still better than what we have right now. I know. Yep. <laughs> if you successfully pinpoint an individual or hit an attacker within thirty feet. Attacker gets no advantages related to hitting you with ranged attacks. These guys are maligning you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but you can try. So they're actually stabbing and not just throwing daggers? Um, obviously, if they stung you and bit you, they're obviously within melee range and have exceptionally long reach compared to you, anyways. Or actually, compared to you, Winston, they're about roughly the same reach because you're using a reach weapon as well. Okay, so I switch out for blind man's fold, and hey, you blind you blindfold yourself. We're fighting blind anyways. Yes, you are fighting blind anyways. And I strike. Where will you strike? In this direction. Okay, you strike in that direction. Make your attack roll. And your mischance roll. Whoops. Or whatever rolls. And mischance... Miss roll would be... 1d100? Yes, 1d100. Okay. Well, Buy man's full or something like that. Do you get to re-roll your mischance or something? So you probably want to roll 2d100, really, every time. Hey, that works. So obviously my ruling anything below 50 is yes, everything above 50, well, in this case, no matter what, you screwed. It's all above 50. You swing, but you hit. Where is it? Oh, I accidentally had a plus four. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just need to see the roll numbers individually. Yeah, you strike empty air. You cut a little uh, fairy tree sapling in half. It was like four foot tall, and now you cut it in half. Okay. It crashes. That's this okay. Is like, this is like Predator, you know, in the jungle. <laughs> you guys are fighting Predator in the jungle. It's like, is there any mud around here? <laughs> no. Unfortunately not. Hopfield, what are you gonna do? You you kinda of get the you kind of get a gist where these attackers are sort of in midair though. You just have no freaking clue exactly. I should run now. Alright, so you rolled my use magic device. Yep, success. 52,000, activate the screen. scroll of gust of wind. Okay, you scroll of gust of wind. Ooh, interesting. A blast of wind emanates from your hands, pushing the fog away. In this direction. Oh, in that direction, okay. Uh, 60 feet. 60 feet, do you remember what the width of the gust of wind is? Or did it just say no. gust of wind, 60 feet? It just says 60 feet range. Okay, a gust of wind blows a good deal of fog away, revealing darkness still. 
Trust me, I, I had this all planned. It was it's, a, it's quite an ingenious setup by your pursuer, so <laughs> who took advantage of a bad situation already. Technically, this isn't even their attack. <laughs> They're just piggybacking. <laughs> I can hear the smirk. Meanwhile, the rangers are still fighting the other attackers, whoever the hell they are. Clearly, it's total chaos out there right now. Uh, the other attackers continue fighting, because now that the rangers have been warned, they're kind of at least somewhat more able to defend themselves, but not much better. You see, you hear more rangers going down, not as fast as they were before when they were having their throats sit in their sleep, but now they're still losing, losing badly. Forge! Uh, shoot. I need to roll a D something. For a confusion check? Yeah. You can either do the honors, actually. You can be the, uh, you be the maker of your own confusion. <laughs> Alright, it is D percentile. So... Yes, I'm looking at the chart right now. Yep, make your D percentile. 72! 72. 72. To self. So you just hurt yourself a little. Not, it's not really that bad. Ow. Just like you just hit yourself. You're like, Psh! smack yourself in the face or something. Woo! Uh, didn't hurt that much. No. I don't suppose it helped with the confusion at all. So, <laughs> smack himself in the face. Unless you're a strength modifier, I'm just going to average it it's just faster than roll. Unless you want to roll and hope you can roll a 1 for. Uh, strength modifier um, is 4. 4? Uh, okay, just eight damage to yourself. Easy, fast, done. Okay. Okay, Forge is confused, okay. and still confused a little for this round. Might, does Might want to do anything to save or help his confused master who's now bobbing, hitting the shadowy air, but Might can barely even see anything in this in the darkness now either, actually. It's kind of like, huh? I don't see anything. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think Mike does want to do something. Okay, what well, he might want to do? Maybe through the empathic con connection, perhaps it senses its master's confusion in the distance. Yeah. Do something like that. Um, I th think what Mike is going to do is, um. Uh, I'm just thinking through the limited things that might could do. Basically, might is going to try and uh, help focus Forge's mind. Um, so the next time he has to make a save, like a will save or confusion, whatever, that might influence things. I mean, might of average intelligence. Not a genius, though. So that's what uh, she's going to try. Um, and uh, the uh, the elemental race that might is get, are exceptionally helpful. So they give a plus four bonus when using the aid another action. I'm hoping that will help as well. Well, uh, let me see here. As far as I know... Unless you wish to expend... Oh, but you can't. For, only Forge can expend a hero point on his own action. Mm-hmm. Well, let's just not see that. So, Forge, do you wish to spend a hero point to re-roll your confusion saving throw again? I'm assuming I'm going uh, to rewind slightly to your action, because this is the only time you can do it, because once it actually reaches might, yeah. truly reaches might, there's no... Yeah, I, I, think, I think I will. Okay. Give me a whirl. <laughs> So, plus, plus four to that save. Forge feels might love for you through your connection. It instantly triggers an immediate action of you using your hero point to throw off the confusion from whatever fell poison fills your mind. And unfortunately, you still fail. <laughs> so you're still confused. It was a good try. All you were right. close. You were close. Grant wanders in the wrong direction and is still confused. He's like, where the hell is everything? I, I hear fighting, but where are you guys? <laughs> I have no clue what's going Looks on. like he wandered towards us to yeah, me. Yeah, he actually did. I rolled his number just to save time. <laughs> and, and, yeah. Purely accidentally, but... <laughs> That's right. 
Okay, Forge is attacked again in, in the deep darkness. And he is struck another six times. So that is going to hurt. Yep. A lot. Oh yeah, and plus two more. So, yeah, you're just you're just being knifed to death in the dark. This is like close in combat here. <laughs> you're being knifed to death while you're floating in midair. Whatever you almost sort of think you hear flapping of wings, maybe. And Oh boy, 106 damage. As you're stabbed with daggers, bitten, and stung. Alright. 106 damage. You need to make another will save. And you take another 6 negative levels. <laughs> Which technically would drop your hit points by another 30. Huh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that definitely doesn't help. Um, you take another four points of charisma drain and probably continue to be confused. <laughs> Extended confusion. Yeah. So, let's see. And then Wiston, again, more dagger strikes and sting and biting in the dark come out at you. And it's gonna hurt, I'm pretty sure. Hits, hits, hits. If any of these are criticals, I, I get a reroll on those. Uh, you get to reroll one. Wait, reroll the critical or you reroll something? <laughs> I get to, to, or not reroll, but roll. 50% yes, mischance. Roll the 50% chance, because there was one critical on this. Uh, are any of them backstabs? Are any or backstabs? No, they're not backstabs. They're all regular Sorry. attacks. No backstabs. Oh, yeah, one knee one under it. Hey, it's below... <laughs> Hello. So that. You should uh, see my like... grin. <laughs> Not sure you'll help, but hey. <laughs> okay, you are definitely hit seven times still, though. That's gonna hurt. Uh, I'm probably suggesting you probably start running pretty soon. Um, 121 damage. I don't think I can run. <laughs> Probably could run in a random direction. 121 damage, plus make a will save. Oh, I only have 109 hit points. Well, then you have to spend a hero point to stay above. You take all that damage. Cool. Leading us up. Or maybe. you can uh, do your Breath, Breath of, of Life, life. Thing, thing on your armor. Your choice, Winston. One hero point, stay at one hit point. Or drop to like whatever and use Breath of Life instead. Actually, kind of, I think Breath of Life might be tactically better, but that's up to you. Yeah, I was thinking that, too. Okay! Um, so if they technically kill me with the attack that would require a will save, do I still have to try to make the will save? Yes, you still have to make the will save. <laughs> make the will save. I'm afraid your pursuers, they are vehement to kill you. <laughs> Very much so. There's a reason, too. And it probably involves blank. The absent Hawkfield, most likely. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hawkfield is probably like, whew, rubs forehead of sweat. <laughs> it's like, I'm really glad they can't see me. <laughs> thanks, buddy, thanks. I'm afraid, Hawkfield, you truly have turned just about every one of your fans into meat shields. <laughs> Incidentally. <laughs> Success was soon you're unaffected by whatever feverish poison that would affect your mind. So, 
you, you roll your breath of life for the hit points that you gain. And yeah. Yeah. I gotta figure out how to do that. It's like, ah, uh, shoot, I can't remember. What was that? I'm looking it up. Okay, who's next? Desperate times. It's called Stop Riding People and Run Far and Fast. Okay. Uh, Wisdom will be brought back by her own breath of life on before her turn arises. Wait, is your breath of life an immediate action? Uh, standard. Well, I actually, happens. I'm not sure. It yeah, it just happens. Uh, 5d8. So otherwise, otherwise, it's your mm -hmm. turn before Hotfield. Yeah, 5d8. Okay, well, 5d8 plus 9 or something, roughly. Well, unless you want to give you average. Which is Excuse average. me. 34 hit points, 34 hit points if it's average. average. Roughly average. About 60%. 34 hit points? Winston, is there anything you want to do? You brought back your prone on the ground because it dropped you. Like, you literally, you I collapsed. got 38. Okay, whatever. 38 hit points. <laughs> you're, you're prone. In the darkness, you can't even see your two, your twinkie fingers, and you're looking up into darkness, <laughs> and you know the thing is out there, <laughs> sticking you good. Oh, and you also took six negative levels or so, seven negative levels, sorry, seven negative levels, so in total it's like 14 or something. Wow, you're at negative 14 to attacks and saving throws. Oh, actually, a negative six. I'm telling you, you actually failed your will saving, so. <laughs> Ouch. Technically. Technically. Uh, no, that'd just be too brutal. No, uh, we'll just give it to you. Okay. Winston, what are you gonna do? You're prone on the ground. You still have your senses. You're weak as, you're weak as a mewling baby. A mewling baby, yes, literally. You hear Grom shout, What the hell are you guys? He is, he's swinging his sword in the distance, cutting I'm like, darkness. over here! Well, in the darkness, it does really weird things people sense. And Grom has the worst reception role of all the characters. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, he's like, wow, And because there's all the screaming and shouting from the rangers who are being slaughtered out elsewhere, so... What's the thing we're going to do before Hotfield goes? Yeah, does brain. weak as a mewling baby mean I can still still have a healing potion? Of course, absolutely. <laughs> Just because you have fourteen negative levels doesn't mean you're dead. And I have a little your twinky fingers or pinky fingers, as one would say. Sure, have a healing potion. Not quite sure how that's gonna help you. You're What's probably, the button do? You're probably better off running right now while you're like crawling through the foliage instead. But okay, huh. you still have a move action as well. That will probably cost you to get up to from prone, unless you're gonna prone crawl, which is only half your movement rate. Yep, heal 27 hit points. You gonna use a move action? This is your chance to do it before I move to Hotfield, because Hotfield. Yeah, gonna I'm. Action. I'm moving. Okay, you crawl move, then it's only 15 feet. If you stand from prone, it's your entire move action. Your decision. Hoffie, I'm what you... just gonna crawl. Uh, you're gonna crawl, make 15 feet. Hoffie, what are you gonna do? You hear your companions being slaughtered. Plus those, you know, extras, the mercs, they're being slaughtered too. But you're like, whatever, who cares? About <laughs> what do I hear from these attackers? Can I hear them at all? Uh, your your recession check would have to be as ungodly as your stealth check to be able to pinpoint them with super precision in this darkness. Oh, I mean, in this darkness slash fog, but you blew away the fog, but there's still all this darkness, so it's kind of screwy. Yeah, but he, he has dark vision. Yes, yes, but he still can't see anything. Why? Oh, that you, kind. Yes, that kind of darkness. <laughs> so, I feel what you do. It's obviously you're faced with blank darkness. What does that mean? Well, you fill in the blank. Uh, deeper darkness. Magic darkness. Until you develop some sort of vision that allows you to see through even magical darkness, you're you're not going to have any. You know, you're as blind as they are right now. In fact, the whole area is blanketed with it. 
everywhere. It's like they prep this slowly while you were insidiously. But did I hear the flapping? Did you hear the flapping with your rolls before? Re roughly, sort of, kind of, but then it stopped. These creatures are smart, you know. They are they must be trained assassin-type killing machines. They just, you know, they kind of move, then they stop. They move, and I stop. And then you can't hear nothing, because they just stop moving. It's truly Predator in the fairy forest, which can be also in the fairy jungle, because it keeps morphing all the time. Man, makes me want to watch Predator all over again. <laughs> Actually, I was having a conversation with my brother about Predator. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hoffy, what are you going to do? Your, your team is is taking a beating from hell right now. Actually, it's not too far off the mark, I think. Reading another scroll. <laughs> I was going to say, that's not metaphorical, is it? <laughs> no, it's not metaphorical. <laughs> yes, success, Hoffy. Well, the 43, you can just about use any magical device you can think of. Uh, scouring winds. Scouring winds. Uh, I'm pretty sure I gave that scroll and don't have a clue what it does because it's probably some sort of randomly selected spell somewhere. That one was... Creates a sandstorm. It creates a sandstorm, yes. That's exactly what I thought it was going to do. Suddenly not exactly regretting the fact that I'm prone. <laughs> All you do is you blind people even more than you're already blinded. Uh, okay, what level was this? This is level 7, so this is going to be 13 rounds. Roll me a 3d6 of piercing damage. Everyone in the area of a 20-foot radius. So you have to... How I feel you need to select your point of... Oh, I don't even think you can target this spell, though. That's the one problem, because you can't see where to target that you have no line of sight in deeper in this deep dark magical darkness. Ah, that that does pose an interesting problem. Or you can you're gonna have to specify an exact point of where the hell you want to place this by specifying an exact distance, which is just the same as choosing something on the map somewhere. Yeah, basically this section right here. I'm going to choose that section right there in a 20-foot radius. So that would translate to about... Sonny Jimbo needs to draw himself a object. Draw a shape. How about a polygon? Let me see how that works here. That's a... Oh. Hot keeper. No, no, not that. <laughs> was it FG? No, it wasn't. Was that FR? Ah, there we go. So roughly. Okay, Hoffield, please make a, another D20 roll for me. Oh, man, why can't I move this thing? This makes no sense. Okay, so you're targeting something like in this area here. Is that what I'm getting at, roughly, or like more like this? More like that. More he like put it close to himself without being affected, so... Okay, just barely missed Wiston there. <laughs> like the last time you hit, you threw that shadow Nova. <laughs> that hit no Wiston in the face. <laughs> no, that was two times. That was the dagger that got me in the face. The shadow Nova just got me. <laughs> Both of which you never know it was him. Oh. I can guess. <laughs> You've never seen Hawk actually use that Shadow Nova, so... I, d I wouldn't know the Shadow Nova, but the dagger, that I can guess. Yeah, that one's a little <laughs> harder to talk my way out of. 
Okay, fantastic. The, you, now you're creating an extremely loud sandstorm that is making it even harder to detect them <laughs> as well. For everyone. Well, maybe they'll get dusty. Maybe, maybe. In the distance continues uh, <laughs> the ranger mercenaries continue fighting whatever their mysterious attackers. Forge! Mm, do you wish to spend a hero point to re-roll your confusion save? Before well... We, before we roll for confusion itself. <laughs> sure, you, you know what? No... Uh, n no, no, I'm going to make it cinematically more awesome. So I'm going to save my hero point until... Uh, you hit one hit point or below. Prevent death. Uh, actually, for when a mic goes. Okay, sure. For when mic goes. It is... So, first, I'll roll the D100. Hey, he can act normally for a round. Okay, yes. Forge, your, your eyes seem to clear up, and you're not in the haze, and you're like, oh, I can think clear again. What are you going to do, Forge? What are you going to do? Uh, I am going to basically get out of there like a bat out of hell. <laughs> um, good call, good call. You're running for the hills. <laughs> well, I'm flying for the hills at, uh, what would that be? So I'm 240 feet away now. So you're running. You're flat out running. Hmm. Wait, he's not stupid. He knows so you're turn if your he flat out runs. You're going to flat out fly run, essentially. You're going to fly away through the tree branches. But that's going to give it an opportunity to stick you in the back, probably. <laughs> so you better consider your option here carefully. Is it going to be Ooh. that or not? <laughs> Um, so I've already gathered power, and that's being stored, so I think I'm actually going to uh, do what it is that I was going to do in the first place. Which is? Um, I'm going to spend a hero point in a different way, okay. um, basically. Okay. Uh, so I've, I've used my telekinesis to do things that aren't strictly by the book, but that's okay because it allows for it. Okay. I, I'm going to try and combine abilities. I can. I have an ability that can hit everything within a 120-foot radius. Okay. I have an ability that allows me to um, b uh, bull rush or trip anything that's hit by my telekinetic blast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend your hill point, and basically it's going to be a hammer fall around me. And we'll say at 60 feet. So basically it's like a giant hand is coming down from the sky and slapping everything to the ground. Okay. You're going to blindly do that? Sure. That's okay. I'm already on the ground. Um, I don't... Radius. Except for Hockfield, apparently. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yep. Well, it falls short of Hockfield by exactly the edge of the Wild Race. Okay. Well, oh, ironic. sorry. I, I don't know where anybody is, so. That is true. Um, that is true. And I am, I am mostly confused, so. That's also true. I think everybody in the area is going to get hit for my TK Blast damage. Pretty and much. Except for Mike be, and Hawkfield. <laughs> um, be slammed to the ground. Um, nice knowing you. <laughs> you, can spend a hero, you can spend a hero point to get back up. <laughs> okay, Forge, give so, it to me. Oh, oh, everything takes 83 points of damage. Um, okay, does that mean, does the attack roll matter, or is this just pure area of effect? I'm, I don't really know. Oh, I suppose the attack roll does matter, but I am doing it basically as a blast, a downwards blast. I don't know if that would matter. Well, 
rolls. The rules say it's supposed to be an attack roll. Yes, Maybe. yes. It, it, it says it's supposed to be an attack roll. Okay, downward blast it is. The only person... Well, definitely you, you just flattened every fairy tree here, and Gromp literally withstood it, but you couldn't tell because you can't see through this incredible darkness. Gromp just like stands there, he's like, oh, this wave of force is crushing down, but he just like holds us and is not affected by him. Winston, you are last 24, so you're actually hit by that last. What was that? You, you cut out. You were actually hit by that blast, and it hit your it hit your AC. I can't tell you what happened to your attackers, because you can't see them. So. Did we hear anything heavy falling or light falling? Just about every tree in this area just got flattened by force with this Buddha palm. Fair point, force. fair point. It came out of the sky, like out of one of those virtual effects, and just literally came up like a Buddha palm, and just came down and just... Mashed everything in a sixty foot, in a sixty foot uh, radius around him, and Grom, of course, was not there. Just like I am, living tank, old man. Yes, he's like, who the fuck did that? <laughs> he's, <laughs> is what Grom literally says. And within your hit, though, so I don't know if that's gonna hurt too much, or you're gonna have to send a humor and stay above one again because you just took eighty three well, damage. Oh, my uh, AC is twenty four, so. <laughs> Yeah, well, his attack roll from Telekinetic Blast in the air was 26, and he doesn't have an ability to shape it, so you got hit. Yeah, I'm going to have to spend a hero point. Spend away, one hero point. You have lots of them, Winston, you can survive. You're at one hit point, exactly one hit point, before his attack. And then Might. Sorry. <laughs> Ward will make it up to you later. <laughs> if I live that long. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mike's turn. Is Mike going to do anything to support his extremely brutalized master? Wow, these creatures are more dangerous than I thought for their CR. It's incredible. <laughs> um, it's a little bit where we can't find them. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Um, Mike is going to basically continue holding her action. Um, when, so basically what's going to happen is she has the ability to do kind of a mega heal on Forge. Okay. Um, and as soon as Forge falls, she's going to sacrifice herself, um, to heal him. Uh, such a loyal familiar. I am greatly Sniff. impressed. Actually, I would never have designed so. a familiar like that. Then again, I never use familiar, so I guess that's a good thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and it and it's literally actually part of the the race's abilities. I just was able to up it a little bit because of the abilities I chose. Ah, so, anyways, it, it dies for you. What a great familiar yes. sacrifice, Grom. Oh, shoot. Let's see, Grant. Where does Grant wander off to? Oh, well, he sort of feels Winston crawling <laughs> in front of him. He's like, I'm right beside him. How blind is this guy? Like, there you are. Winston. He is old. Yeah, man. Come on, he's old. He's like, uh, oh, there you are, Winston. What the hell's for? He doesn't have his spectacles on. Yes, he doesn't have spectacles on. <laughs> he was going to blindly. I'm just like. He was going to blind walk right into the treehouse tree, but now that he found you, he's not going to walk that direction. He's like, he takes the five and seven, tries to guard you. He's like, you he wizard blade. Tries, he's like, where the hell are they? Where the hell are they? And swing around trying to feel them out. Oh, man, these creatures. Well, Forge is going to get it good right now. That's all I can say. This is going to hurt a lot. Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh Oh man, that that definitely hurts. That definitely hurts a lot. Forge, you just got stuck six more times. You, Wee! You just got stacked six more times there. <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't really Yeah, know. he's he's beyond dead at this point. Um, Forge has dropped. And that's when Might sw uh, swoops in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the way we're going to do it is 
she swoops in um, and hmm, what would be cinematically cool? Uh, so Forge is flailing around, confused again. She allows herself to be hit by um, Forge Twist, his hammer, okay. um, and basically explodes. And that will heal him. And, well, that will heal him some. So. Okay. Cool. Oh, plus and... you also took 6 levels. Yep. Yeah. But he's no longer confused. No, you're not confused. <laughs> you are not confused. No further subtractions from any other hit point loss. But you are probably going to be at your whatever hit points that you got from Mike. I don't know how much Mike gave you back. So. <laughs> yep, yeah, so that is what Mike does. Mike is no more. For now. I uh, actually, actually, using this ability, um, it specifically says, if um, if the Wisp uses this ability, its death can't be prevented, and its life can't be restored by any effect less than true res, miracle, or wish. Oh, well. But it cleared away the confusion, and Forge is still alive. Okay, Forge, you're still alive. Uh, not confused anymore is also good. And being not confused is also a very good thing. Oh my god! Somewhere in the darkness, Grob's like, um, oh, as a dagger slips through one of the cracks in his armor and cuts him once for 15 damage, and he takes a negative level. He's like, where the hell did I come from? And, yeah. Is that was hot for him. So. Wait. My attack roll was modified by the negative levels. So I probably didn't actually hit you, Weston. Oh, that's a good point. Very good point indeed. Now I also probably didn't hit anybody. <laughs> <I tells you. laughs> At least he told <laughs> <laughs> okay, Winston, give yourself back 83 hit points and a hero point. <laughs> You're fine. You <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Uh, let's see. And... Not actually sure that's how many hit points I had, but. <laughs> or whatever the hell, wherever you were at that point. I'm not thing. honestly sure. <laughs> You're not honestly sure? Okay, fine. Just give yourself roughly so and so number of your points. It's good enough. It's fine. Could be 40, could be 80. Doesn't matter. Okay, let's say Grom just got stuck with a dagger. What's in this your turn? What are you going to do? You just saw Grom take a hit or his tin can rattle as a dagger slid beneath one of the. Um, see sleeves of his armor somewhere, cutting him. Couldn't see much else. You know, you all, you, that's all you heard, actually. It's just that pitch black. No, anyway, what are you going to do? This is bad. It's a pretty bad situation right now. Meanwhile, Hoffield's just like, mm -hmm, steeple finger. <laughs> trying to think what to do. <laughs> but safe, as usual. Okay. <laughs> try. I... Negative 14 levels, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, you're at negative 14 levels. <laughs> I think I'm going to withdraw. Withdraw, <laughs> then. Withdraw. But I will also kind of tap Grump on the shoulder, but like, just so he knows I'm withdrawing. <laughs> gotcha, Winston, I understand. Yes. Okay, so start withdrawing, and Grump will see what, about, what he can do when his turn comes out. If he doesn't go down. <laughs> okay. How are we going to do? Going to leave the deeper darkness radius. Oh, everywhere is covered in this area. This entire area, like up to about this point, is covered in deeper darkness. Yeah, and that's where he'll go. <laughs> All right. That's a fair distance to go. <laughs> go. Sure. You're heading out of the, the 
massive darkness. More more killing continues with the other mercenaries. Forge is still alive. Forge, what are you going to do? You, uh, you can barely hear anything. There's just this screeching sandstorm. Or sand, sand grating sound somewhere. To the south. Um. Oh, man. What is he going to do? Oh, man. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, anyways, nothing. I'm not going to say anything else. It's just you really high tail it over there. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He's actually going to, uh, um, yeah, he's going to hightail it out of there. Okay, uh, you're going to hightail it out of there. Yep, I just go. <laughs> you, want, you can spend a hero point to make sure that the, you manage to elude the pursuit. <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay. Going from, going from... Yeah, nine hero points uh, in a session to five hero points. Sure. <laughs> you can always earn them back. Just keep role playing. That's all. <laughs> oh yeah. And I'm over here going. I'm really glad I I found time to organize this spreadsheet this week. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's true. You got bananas of hero points for that. So, okay, Forge, you run off. You're like you fly, zigzag, everything. And you manage to lose your pursuers if they were actually pursuing you. You don't know. <laughs> To be honest, Grom is like, I'm time to pull out here, he says, and then he also run distance running off. And they're like, mm, meh, whatever. <laughs> Since they can't they were gonna try to get Forge, but they probably couldn't get him. Winston, what are you gonna do? They probably... Remember that I have boots of teleportation. <laughs> okay, you're gonna teleport somewhere? Yes. Okay, boom, you're gone. Caulfield sneakily sneaks away, and the uh, mercenaries are all probably all doomed. <laughs> Very much so. If they haven't figured out that they should be running, <laughs> they're probably already dead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see, hours later. Uh, Forge, give me a survival check. Winston, give me a survival check. Hopfield, give me a survival check. Hell, everyone, give me a freaking survival check. <laughs> who else is everyone? <laughs> I know. Who else is there? <laughs> uh... Rob is like, I'm lost! <laughs> hey, that's not terrible. Unless who has you... the map? Yeah, who the hell has the map? I, I do. Oh, well, you better find each other then. <laughs> You did ask for everybody to roll a survival check. <laughs> Man, this is not looking good for you guys. Okay. Winston's pretty good. Hotfield. Mm, Forge. Mm. Uh, why does Arwell roll a survival check? <laughs> you said everybody. <laughs> I, I'm just <laughs> messing with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That moment when the party's so screwed, the NPC that's not even here has to make a survival check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. Survi oh, Grom actually has survival. What a surprise. Mm, so, so. He is a fighter. It's okay. It's not he hasn't so walked off a cliff, at least. No, he hasn't yeah. yet. Okay, so you guys managed to eventually find each other, given that eventually Winston finds someone. The roles were okay, not our roles, roll, sorry. <laughs> but, well, it took you more hours than you thought because of the way the roles panned out. I would say it took you eight hours to find each other. <laughs> so an entire day has been wasted finding each other. <laughs> And, uh, I'm over here, guys. Does wandering around the forest count as light, <laughs> light duty? Uh, I don't know. Does that count as light duty? I suppose. Maybe. <laughs> so 
sort out. <laughs> I might be for sure. Uh, you better check that description for me because I don't have enough RAM to keep running too many tabs right now. <laughs> okay. Okay, people, you guys finally meet up with each other. You're in a uh, clearing with a lot of white toadstools. Uh, no rangers have found you. If they even survived, you doubt it. <laughs> so let's Yoy. bring you together here. And Hawker keeps his distance using only his voice because, you know, he just loves being sneaky. And you regrouped. Barely, after wasting a day trying to find each other, and then everyone realized that Forge had the map, <laughs> and he ran really fast and far, and extremely skillfully, thanks to his hero point expenditure. And, yeah. What do you guys do? I'm over here looking it up. So, bring mm. together, I'll... Alright, we're gonna try this. All right, so Mr. DM, mm -hmm. there's something that exists in the world that Forge was created in. Uh, it's a, in my world, it's actually a magical thing called an oath mark. Basically you create, or you say an oath on everything that you are. It gives you certain abilities, whatever. That, that's the way it works in my world. Uh -huh. Um, and it's one of those, basically, uh, to put it in spell form, it's you're giving a gius to yourself, or casting gius on yourself. You get some really cool abilities, but uh, it's something you have to do before your life ends. And yeah, what if your life ends before you manage to do it? Do you turn into a banshee? It's, uh, you know? Dark Sun's uh, dwarving. Ghosts. You know, I, honestly, I'm not going to. Okay, um, because I have a player here who actually doesn't need to know about those yet. Uh, Fine, so don't tell me uh, the game then. Tell me later. <laughs> yes, I'll tell you later. So what Forge is going to do once everybody's there is he's muttering a little something because he knows of both marks. He knows the import of them, okay. and he marks himself with a etching tool. It would be a dagger, but well, his flesh is metal. Um, an etching tool, and it looks like a really funky scar. Okay. Um, Gromp is looking at you as like a Tin Man. What are you doing? Some sort of like, you know, self-masochist or something? <laughs> so. No, I just created a vow, or I just set a vow. I'll, I'll tell you later what it is that he's vowing. Okay, but okay. you're about something. Yes. So there we go. And then I'll run around and hit everybody with uh, the wand of restoration. Hit everyone with the wand of restoration. Well, there's a lot of nigger levels to fix there. Oh, wait, they're temporary. Oh, I think that's only one charge then. Please remind me if that's right. Uh, All right, so that's that. Uh, that's that's that. Right. There we go. Everyone's back to normal, except for the hip points. Uh, the rules for rest, they just say they're somewhat vague, and use at your discretion. Fine, light rest, you get, what, uh, your level's worth in hit points or something, your CR's worth, so, what, 20 or something? 20 yeah. points extra there, Winston. Done. Everyone give me a perception check. Yay. I roll for Gromp and he sucks, so... <laughs> Fine, I'll roll for him anyways. I already have this macro for him. Oh yeah, it sucked. So... Aha. Uh -huh. Hockey, look, you, you have this weird imperceptible idea that somewhere in the far distance something was moving. Mm. And now that an entire day was wasted, practically, almost, sort of, like, it's getting closer towards evening, you know, as the shadows and darkness deepens, you know, it's a bad time to be out. <laughs> well, out in the open, that is, in the forest, the jungle, 
the fairy jungle. Now it's everything around you, the palm tree. <laughs> Growing up like sand. <laughs> Instead of a forest. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I'll go to the group very quickly and whisper, eh, we're not alone, and then rush back to my distance. Well, it's a far, far in distance, that's for sure. It's just this, mm. this edge, this uh, looming, lurking threat in distance. You swore you thought you saw the corner of your eye, huh? Your eye, huh? Yay. Would I also be somewhere in that swearing I saw something? Uh, yep. Yep, pretty good. Yeah, you swear you thought you saw it in the far, 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 far distance, like hundreds and hundreds of feet, maybe almost a mile away. Something, like, out of the corner of your eye. It's only because you you and Hoffy have almost evil-like vision. <laughs> you even notice something like that. Two somethings, maybe. Hmm. But then the mysterious fairy sun, or whatever passes for light here, is slowly dropping beneath the horizon, casting more and more twilight. Should we... We need to find this gate. We should probably heal first. <clears throat> Point... Gate? Uh, point made well. Uh, so... Some of them will be a 1D 100. I've got it. I was gonna say, somebody besides me, I don't do so good with that. <laughs> okay, no, nothing happens. Continue. Okay, uh... When everyone seems to want to rest and heal up, Hawk's gonna go scout ahead. Sure, you can scout. Um... Okay, Hawkfield, just roll playing it out. You scout ahead, and you see this, what appears to be a cool-looking treehouse, about three levels. Uh, reminds you of, like, one of those, uh, fun-looking com... Oh, what are those weird trees that Japanese people might grow? I can't remember what they're called again. Bonsai? Bonsai trees! Yes, that's right. Thank you very much. Let's see. And, uh... Ah, uh, my house is decorated in Japanese stuff. Oh, well, no wonder. It was like a bonsai <laughs> tree, and you see uh, the dusk is falling, and because this place is like, you know, weird weather and weird seasons, it's like autumn here in this area of the fairy world. And you see what appears to be a satyr with glasses, sipping tea at a table, reading a book in front of his treehouse, his three-story treehouse, uh, with two satyr children kind of like, you know, playing ball <laughs> with their hoops. <laughs> and, <feet. laughs> and that's what you spot, like, maybe, oh, uh, maybe 20 or 30 minutes off from whatever direction the group was, because, hell, there's no directions in, in the first world, so... And yeah, that's what you do come across when you advance, Scout. This is in the direction towards the sigil portal, based off what the map said. But you, you guys detour today because you everyone got lost, so... You know, lost another day. So, that's it, what? Let's see, you travel two, lost a day. So now you're back at five days from the portal. Yeah, that's right, five days from the portal. Instead of uh, incidentally, I noticed we have a carpet of flying. In group loop. I think it's a small carpet of flying, though, isn't it? Well, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, I'll double check. Might be big enough for four people. I think it's ten feet. Or if it's a five foot, it's only one person. Carpet of flying, five by ten. Five by ten. Two people. <laughs> Two people can fit on that carpet. Okay. Well, Hawk you guys... wouldn't want to ride it anyways. Hawk was like, uh. <laughs> I don't know what Hawkfield does. What's a Hawkfield? So, what do you guys do, Hawk? Hawkfield, you van scout, you saw the Seder, the Seder guy with his glasses. He looks like, you know, uh, reminds me of kind of like a, a Seder yuppie, sort of. 
<laughs> because we totally know what a yuppie is. I don't know. Imagine whatever a yuppie might be to you. Better than a satyr hipster. <laughs> kind of reminds you of, yes, it would be a satyr yuppie, but out of Chronicles of Narnia type satyr. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's probably the best analogy you can pull out. And he's sipping tea, he's like, mm-hmm. he goes, yes, my little kids, he goes, that's right. He goes, almost time to supper, see what your mom's making. That's what, how old you're just seeing this. Just like, <laughs> yeah, just, just watching for the moment. Okay, you watch it. It's just like, it. the kids run, he's like, hey, mom. They're just being Sylvan, obviously, which is what you understand, Hawfield. Otherwise, everyone must be like, oh, what do they say? <laughs> and just like, you know, you see this, the, his maids come out with, like, this fresh made, uh, you know, vegan shepherd's pie equivalent of some sort in this world. And they're, they're just eating, it's like, like 20, 30 minutes away. And that's when you advance go so far in, in towards the direction towards the sigil portal. I mean, you start ranging a bit further outwards, mostly more forest, more things like that. Uh, more jungle sometimes. Uh, give me a survival check one more time for yourself, Hawkfield. Uh, those six rolls were me using uh, telekinetic surgery. Oh, yes. Yeah, um. Okay, Hawkfield. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, give me a reflex save, though. This will probably succeed easily. Reflex it is. Success. You step into quicksand, but your your calorie reflexes are so good that you literally leap right out in a, a backwards roll before it can pull you in. And the quicksand vanishes almost as quickly as it appeared. Yeah. Lovely. Moving quicksand. <laughs> well, Lightning sand. Welcome to the first world, fairy realm. Weird things happen here. Well, maybe not as weird as Dream World. That's pretty weird. <laughs> okay, so nothing of the ordinary. So any further to certain other direction it seems to lead you to more hazardous areas of this region, valley region of the Silver Copper Village. Okay, yeah, 143 healing to Gromp. Gromp's like, thank you very much. He says he's smoking his pipe. Waiting for Hawfield's return from his scouting. Like, I didn't even know Hawfield scouted at all, says Grom. I thought that guy did nothing. Grom's <laughs> 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 like, um. like, I thought he made us do all the hard work. That guy. <laughs> yeah, as well, maybe I was wrong about him. I wouldn't bet too much on that. <laughs> you sure about that, Winston? Yes. Seem like I'm going. not actually saying that. I'm just oh. thinking. Oh, okay. Coach just one minus five. like, hmm, 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 And he's cooking because he has actually okay survival skill, pretty de- decent ranks in it. And so he's cooking up some stewed rabbit and stuff like that. He just keeps it, tries to keep the smoke down. And, okay. So, Hawfield, is there anything else you wish to observe? You want to keep scouting further afield? Yeah, we'll scout up ahead more. So if you want to head more, well, it's not much more further before it becomes like you're literally leaving group behind. <laughs> what you... I don't know, do you want to do that? It's like, la, la, la. No, we'll go back now. Okay, go back. <laughs> he likes his meat shield. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, let them test the quicksand out first so I don't have to accidentally step in it. Okay, so That's Hawkeye fine. returns to the group, sees them making... Uh, food, and Grom is like kind of trying to keep the smoke down as much as possible. Like, with, like, Use kind of dry down. wood. Yes, Grom's not an idiot, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to build his little stone cave to keep the smoke in, like a little built-up stone thing, kiln, oven sort of thing. So like that way, if those creatures are trying us, it'll be a little, just a little bit harder, but considering how skilled they are, oh no, maybe they already know where where we'll be soon enough, he says, as he's blowing on the, the tinder, trying to stir up the fire some more. 
I hope you guys have a plan against it, you know. Against whatever the hell those things are. They must be chasing us from that gate, says Grom. Yes. Damn. Damn it, he says. Well, whatever they are, they have wings. They use daggers. They use, uh, darkness. That fog was probably them, too. Um... Uh... Life draining magic, abundance and used. Yeah, they used a lot of life draining magic. Yeah, cause it's also like a chill cold neck. I stuck that dagger right through the grease of my armor there. It sounds just like on the staircase. It must be the same. It has to be. Can't be any other. likely. Alright, well, the path is relatively clear. Except for a family of satyrs. You're satyrs, eh? Says Grom. Hmm. Maybe we should drop by and see if we get some extra information on the region, of okay, supplies or something. I don't know. What do you guys think, says Grom? May work well. May work well, you mean might work well? Should we do it then? Say <laughs> Tin Man says wrong. Yes. We might want to uh, camp elsewhere though. They didn't look like the human eating type. I was more thinking that we're being chased by something. Which we wouldn't necessarily want to get a family involved in. I'm just like, yeah, I have to agree with Winston there. I mean, if these things are chasing us, we might end up just killing them, them satyrs too while I'm on the way, while they're hunting us. Just barely managed to make out with the last time. I don't even think those rangers Winston managed to drum up support from probably even survive, <laughs> says Crump. I did say they were pointless. You need to talk up louder. <laughs> <laughs> Ross is smoking on his pipe. He's like, hmm, this is, this is tougher than I ever, I ever imagined, he says. Whatever these things are, they sure remind me of plainer creatures, that's for sure. Must be. If they're devils or demons, I'll definitely want to stick them good. Damn bastards, says Grom. Well, balance of probability, they're not angels. Uh, I've never fought angels before, says Grom. <laughs> They, um, if they're, um, if they're as bad as devils and demons, I'll be happy to stick them too with my sword. <laughs> good aligned, good aligned planar creatures. Even good aligned planar creatures can be pains and need to be stuck once in a while. <laughs> oh, God. oh, don't worry, I'll feel I have a sword knife for that one too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> They don't generally interfere with those on a quest from a deity, though. Not typically, from what I've heard. And Grom turns towards Forge. Hey, Forge, wh why is it you're still staying at all those weird carvings you carved in your metal body there? I don't even really know why the hell you did it. That's what they do, all day. <laughs> Says Grom. I miss. My friend. Oh, you mean that flying, uh, whatever the hell it was, ball of crackly stuff. <laughs> See, it's yeah. Well, I sure, um, I sure guess he was kind of cute. <laughs> Started to grow on me, I guess. See, it's grown. Well, I guess it won't be as as lighted and brilliant as it usually is every day. Well. So, um, should we go now? Well, if everyone wants to go and see these satyrs, then yeah, sure, I'm all for it. Yep. Though so I'm still worried that they, uh, we might be drawing them into... Uh, the line of fire really says Grom. But hey. We shouldn't linger too long. Probably a good idea, says Grom Stone. 
He's okay. I'll march forward first. Uh, Afield, can you point me roughly in the direction of the walk here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't do the scouting. How the hell would I know where they are? <laughs> he wouldn't know even if he did do the scouting. <laughs> yeah. Yep. An arrow flies into a direction, hits a tree. That way. Yes, right on. Nice. Oh, nice. valiantly invisible leader. <laughs> good on. And he marches off. So about half an hour later, you reach the Satyr's Bonsai Treehouse. Nickname, not actually the name of the treehouse. And uh, you see the, the, the door to the Satyr house is still wide open. There's the fresh smell of... Uh, baked lamb or veal saves Gromp because Gromp has survival skills and you know, has an idea of what it smells like. And I suppose if you had professional cooking, you would probably also know. Hmm. Uh, I don't think any of you have professional cooking, so it doesn't really matter. That's fine. And uh, Gromp stomps over, is like, uh, who wants to do the honors here? Says, he's like, pointing, waves back, or do you just want me to, you know, yell into the house or something? <laughs> I think I'll I'll go ahead and knock. Okay, you knock on the already open door. It's like, who's there? Who's there? It's in Sylvan, though. Who knows Sylvan here? Besides Me. Me. Forge and Hawkeye know Sylvan. Grom looks at Winston. Winston looks at Grom. They look at each other and like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Winston looks at Forge because she knows he can understand. Grom looks around. Home knows that you won't see Hawfield anyway. It's like, uh... Okay. <laughs> yes, and Hawfield, listened. Hawfield and Forge, you hear them say, it's like, who's there? Is is the voice of the male satyr. The satyr with the glasses looks like a, looks like a yuppie or sage or something like that. Okay, little kids, you guys stay here. Let me go check out what's going on. The satyr comes over. He's like, comes out of the door. The shadows out of the darkness. Well, more of, not really ashes, it's more like lamplight. You see, when you peer in, you notice a, a uh, living room or salon filled with books and table, a few, a table here and there. Cozy looking, for sure. My job's like a, I don't know, an elf home, maybe, but with more clutter. Scrolls. Obviously not elf. Obviously not elf. It's a satyr. <laughs> a very bookish satyr. <laughs> yes, a very bookish satyr. And the satyr adjusts his glasses on his nose and he looks at Grom, who looks like a tin can. Uh, well, he looks like a helmed horror, practically, with spikes all uh, on his armor. He's like, my god, that looks menacing, <laughs> says the satyr. Then he looks at Wiston. And can't really, he's not really quite sure what, what to make of you necessarily, except, my, my, uh, that's quite an exotic weapon you have there. <laughs> and I can't understand him because he's speaking in Sylvan. <laughs> he says, oh, pardon my manners, I must be speaking Sylvan still, he says in common. <laughs> he says, ah, uh, yes, my name is, uh, Let's see here, where did I write that? <laughs> Malakan! My name is Malakan, he says. Welcome to my treehouse! Or, shall I say, a bow, humble abode, says Malakan. You must be visitors from another world to the first world here. What brings you to my, what brings you to my home necessarily? Hadn't been expecting visitors so far out from Silver Copper, says Malakan. We were sent <clears throat> for, uh, by the villagers of Silver Copper to deal with a problem that they've been having, and we're still on our way. It got a bit uh, sidetracked. Oh, really? Well, you must be careful. These parts are ruled by a clan of extremely dangerous pixies, you know. <laughs> I hear they've been 
they've been organizing quite a bit. They were usually these pixies, probably on Seely Court, says Malachan. Very, very vicious, these pixies, he says. They, they really enjoy going through and slitting people's throats in the night, I hear. They don't bother me, though. We have a deal, really. I stay out of their business and they stay out of my business, as long as I, you know, don't interfere with things and all that. But, um, like I said, they've been organizing quite a bit more highly. Usually they're quite a chaotic bunch, going around murdering random travelers here and there from the sigil portal who stray too far from the usual uh, caravan routes, or if they're not heavily guarded, says Malachan. Yes, yes, this clan pixie is a horrible group. Yes, he's on Sealy. Uh, well, uh, it wouldn't do to have three guests just standing out here in the middle of nowhere. You don't look like your well, except for this fellow who points at the armored spike Gromstone. Please, everyone, whoever is here, make a diplomacy check. Otherwise, you look all too menacingly intimidating. Maybe you won't invite you to his home. Diplomacy, please. And of course, Hawkfield is just hiding. I'm sure. It's like I have shown myself. He says, "Oh, Winston, the true diplomat warrior." <laughs> That's, that's funny. <laughs> yes, it is. I don't know if you even have the tr that ranks in diplomacy, Winston. This is a lucky roll. I I uh, I put quite a few into diplomacy and um, made it a cl and made it a class. Skill. Yes, I see. So very high, actually. Yes, plus twenty there. You know, as well, uh, from the looks, you I guess uh, you look like decent folk. Please do come in. You know, you don't look the dangerous sorts. He utters some sort of words in another language that, unless you speak this language, does anyone speak Aklo? Nope. Uh, was that your, what was that helmet you had? Oh, actually, yes, I understand. I understand Aklo. But you don't speak it. Oh, Correct. He's, uh, he just simply said some sort of word of Aklo or Oran, uh, language of air, uh, some sort of passphrase of some sort. Okay. I'm not going to say the specific word meant, but you you heard him say a specific passphrase. He's like, okay, now please, you may cross the th threshold, he says. And you guys walk over the threshold, and nothing seems to happen. And he's like, you're inside of his massive salon with all the books and scrolls and maps and taps and compasses and all sorts of little things and even gyroscopes. It's been immediately drawn to the bookcase, like, ooh. <laughs> so, uh, says uh, Malakan, are you uh, also a lover of books, Miss... Did you guys introduce yourself? <laughs> Wiston. Wiston. And she has a four. She looks only at the books and scrolls as well. You know, ah, people of the word, of knowledge and the spoken word, people who take after my own heart, my wife would definitely be happy to, um, to meet with you. Unfortunately, she's a bit busy taking care of the kids upstairs. And, Oh, please, let me uh, fetch you some tea, he says. Rest, rest. Consider this place a safe refuge, a haven, and whatnot. Please do, and stay for Thank dinner. Thank you. You're welcome, good sir. I think I recognize your race, is it not? You are... Forged, did you say um, you were Warforged or something, or some other... Uh, basically, uh, a knock, uh, a, not knockoff, but a form of a Warforged. It's a Pathfinder version of a, of a Warforged. Okay. Except, uh, with more autonomy and, and also a specific purpose. Yes, you are so. a very unique sort of Warforged. I haven't seen your ilk in a very, very long time. There are some from the world, uh... Somewhere known as Eberron, he says. Yours don't look like that sort, and I can tell. 
He goes, well, no worries, please stay for dinner. Is this all of you? Only three? You were saying? Uh, <laughs> that cannot be, for there must be a fourth, should there not? A fourth, yes, yes. So, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. There's no need to be shy, says uh, Malachan the Seder. <laughs> I won't bite. <laughs> Uh, I think it's gonna stick with three because actually I think I gotta go, guys. Oh, you have to head off. Already? Yeah. Oh, yes, it's almost midnight. Yes, that's true. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm about to that point too. This is a good point. You've reached a safe haven where whoever pursues you cannot pursue. <laughs> so, yes, let us call it about this point. Uh, Eleven minutes to the typical end. That way, no one has to over has to uh, run out of sleep or something like that. Yes, 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 mm. all agree. I just, I was, in, was just going to say that, um, that there was a fourth, but he likes to wander off and keep his distance, so I have no idea where he is. Oh, I see. Well, tell me he should be careful. There are horribly <laughs> dangerous things still in this place of mine, things I've tinkered with, other things that I have to protect, and other things, well, best not to worry, best not to get involved with certain little things, uh, oh, where is that catalogue of mine? Yes. Anyways, yes, well, please, uh, please, uh, come to the kitchen, and let us have dinner. And so you are led to the board of the kitchen, and we will end the session there, where you will have dinner and get your chance to learn a bit more about what the hell is going on. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Excellent. And an answer to how to get at the top of the pillars of ash. Don't worry, there is an answer. <laughs> A very fast Dun shortcut. Dun um, Think fairy man, tales. That, that was a harsh session. And I thought I had what I had planned for the players tomorrow night was bad. Oh, oh. goodness. <laughs> 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 Well, okay, you, keep in mind that you're going against what is somehow known as the seventh race that you have no details about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Um, I have been working on that little snippet thing. Yeah. He, put this, he puts this thing in the library, which is a somewhat destroyed something pertaining to the seventh race so there's like letters missing and i'm pretty sure that all of the sentences just kind of end and don't pertain to the next line well that's always good a mystery yeah. oh yes something to slowly unveil like an onion oh there's mm -hmm. more more than meets the eye with this little detour and should like I said, more than meets the eye. Already planned. Excellent. They're transformers. Well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like this. I was just kidding. No, of course it's not transformers. That's crazy. No, nothing like a seventh phrase. That's for sure. That, that's reserved for the true campaign plot. This is just a detour to reach the camp. The true campaign plot's main issues. Oh, detours are great. Oh, don't worry. This one. Hey, there's a detour talk. with a library. It's a detour. That's always great. Ooh, we like libraries. <laughs> and dangerous magical <laughs> artifacts and scrolls and all that sort of thing. Yes. yes that's yes. you know. Dangerous magical, magical artifacts and that sort of thing is kind of business as usual. I mean, Hawk's carrying around a pair of severed hands. Yes, he is carrying yeah. a pair of severed hands, and he still doesn't decide what to do with them. But he, uh, he's, well, let's just say I have a amusing plan to deal with that, that pair of hands. <laughs> oh, yes, don't worry about that. Um, okay, so... So, Ashley. Yes. Um, can can you keep meta knowledge out of the campaign? Oh yeah. You okay. Know. Our, uh, scribbles on your metal body thing, are we? <laughs> yes. Yes. So basically, what happens in my world? 
Um, you get abilities. Right, um, so to get it, so. All right, have a good night. Have a good, okay, night. good night. See you next week, or hear you. Um, yeah, hear you next week. Um, so basically, you, you gain abilities depending on the oath that you made. In this particular case, uh, the oath that he made was that he would um, bring, basically, bring justice to.